Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Bob Morris, professor of biology at Wheaton College in Massachusetts. Welcome to another episode of Science with Dr. Bob. Today, we're going to answer the question, can we see sound? The quick answer is no. We can't see sound because sound is pressure waves moving through air. But we can see the effects of sound, and today we're going to use a Rubens tube to demonstrate that fact. Now, this panpipe, the panpipe creates different notes by resonating at different frequencies. The length of the tube determines the note because we're creating standing waves of pressure within the length of that tube. So what's a standing wave? Well, a standing wave is a pattern of pressure waves in a tube. For a, music, for a wind instrument, it's a pattern of waves that seem to form in the same place all the time in a tube. So here we have one wave that's uh, up and down in the middle, and if I increase the amount of energy, we can go from this wave, we call this the fundamental or the first harmonic, we can add a little more energy and go to the second harmonic. That's now created uh, two apparent standing waves. Those, so, the, so along the length of the slinky now, picture that there are two points, the two dancing points, where the pressure is rising and falling very quickly. And in the middle is one quiet point, and those, each of those points has another name. We call the quiet point in the middle a node. There's actually a node at my left hand and a node at my right hand also where the movement is very little. And there are two dancing points, two anti-nodes we call those, that are between the nodes. If I increase the amount of energy put into this slinky, I might be able to get, I might be able to get three standing waves and four nodes. And that principle of standing waves created in a wind instrument or in a tube is what we can see with the, is what we can see with the Rubens tube. How are we going to be able to see those standing waves in this tube? Well, that's where the fun starts. Um, that's what the propane is for. So Dr. Heinrich Rubin, a phys German physicist, invented and published the Rubens tube back in 1905 as a way to demonstrate the existence of standing waves in a tube. And what we need to do is introduce the right kind of vibration into that tube, the right frequency, that is the right, uh, the, the put waves of pressure down the tube often enough to match the re reflected waves that'll be coming back down the other tube. That's actually how I generated the standing waves in the slinky, was by sending waves from one end down the slinky at the same uh, frequency with which they were bouncing back. They add up to each, uh, with each other, and we get points of high frequency change, or, or we get points of high pressure change, we call those the antinodes, and we get points of low change, we call those the nodes. In order to see them along a Rubens tube, um, Dr. Rubens invented the system of a long hollow pipe. This is just a copper pipe, and thanks to the physics department at Wheaton College for, this, uh, for sharing this equipment with me. Along the top of this tube are small holes drilled, and I'm feeding propane into, that, uh, into the space that fills the tube. At one end, I've capped it. That'll reflect the waves. It doesn't, in fact, matter whether the tube is open at an end or closed at an end. The waves will reflect either way. In this case, we're closing it to, to keep the propane in. And at this end, we've just, I've just placed a balloon. That rubber diaphragm at the end will allow me to send vibrations of pressure down into the tube. So let me start that up and show you. There's the Rubens tube alight. Now, I'm now going to just tap the balloon here at the end, and you'll see how pressure waves are immediately conducted down through the propane, and any change in pressure is seen as a change in the height of the flame. We should then be able to 
see if we can create standing waves by looking for those changes in flame height. For that, we need to collect the sound. I have this fancy, fancy cardboard and aluminum foil cone that can go over the end of the Rubens tube. And a better device for making cleaner notes than my voice, I'll use my trumpet. And let's see if we can match the frequency of the sound, the note that I introduce into the end of the Rubens tube, with the natural frequencies that are resonant, that, uh, that reflect along the length of the Rubens tube. If it's not matching, we'll get a level, uh, we'll get level flames. If it does match, we should start to see those antinodes and nodes. That frequency must not match. Starting to see nodes and antinodes there. So Dr. Rubens has helped us to see standing existence of standing waves in a tube with this device, a Rubens tube developed in 1905, allowing us to see that in the places where the, where the pressure is varying a great deal, you get a antinode of, high pr of, of uh, pressure change, and in the areas between those antinodes, in the nodes, you get those quiet spots. So there you have it. The Rubens tube and allows us to see where standing waves form um, along that tube, and that can allow us to picture those, the, how a wind instrument like a trumpet or those panpipes uh, forms notes um, themselves. So, until next time, keep on experimenting.